Hi, my name is Suela. I'm the founder and owner at Suela Wines. I'm a biotechnologist by profession. I'm a winemaker and I'm a wine enthusiast. So today I'm going to talk about um, one of the topics that I feel personally um, and that, the, well, the specific thing that I'm going to talk about is um, undermined and that is the sweet wines. Sweet wines is the topic for today. So um, I feel that a lot of us don't really have an appreciation for sweet wines. And that is because there is a whole lot of, um, you know, the idea that sweet wines are, you know, automatically very poorly produced wines or just wines with low quality. And that is, is not totally correct. Yes, you can find sweet wines that are of low quality. And there are wines that are of high quality, that are premium wines, uh, or if I were to put it in that way, that are actually amongst the best wines to drink within, well, within the world. Um, and sweet wines actually just differ in so many ways. So I think it's very important that we have an understanding where sweet wines come from or how sweet wines are made. The sweetness in wine is what determines whether the wine would be categorized as sweet wine or not. And even within the sweet wine categories, there are different um, levels in terms of the sugar that the wine has and also, you know, the style that is that wine is classified as. Um, so when we speak of sweet wines, we just generally speak of wines that have, um, you know, a certain level of residual sugars to it. And residual sugars just is, is just um, the amount of sugars well measured or amount of sugars that are present in the wine at the point where we consume that wine. So the residual sugar uh, in simple terms would be just the sugars in the wine. And these sugars are supposed to be naturally occurring. So as you know, wine is made from grapes. Well, wine is made from grapes and the grapes get crushed um, in order for us to extract the juice. And that juice contains sugar. And those sugars are the ones that are being utilized by the yeast that gets added into the, the juice and then alcohol and carbon dioxide gets produced. So if a winemaker wants to produce a sweet wine style, um, there are many ways in which that can be accomplished. So the most common way would be to stop the fermentation before all the sugars are converted into alcohol, before all the sugars present in that juice are used up. So what you do is you therefore have to stop the fermentation process. Most sweet wines are produced with uh, alcohol level of 12%. So the idea is to stop the fermentation around 12% alcohol and then retain some level of sweetness in the wine. And that's one way in which our wines get our sweetness or in which winemakers produce sweet wines. So these sweet wines, um, you know, it will also, well, obviously the residual sugar gets measured and then we get to know, you know, is this a natural, is it, is this a natural sweet, is this a semi-sweet or is this, what is it? And then there's also another way, well, obviously if we're going to talk about stopping fermentation, um, you know, by fermentation can be stopped by basically freezing the wine or lowering the temperature of the wine and therefore that will you know uh, create a condition that is not favorable for the yeast to survive remember the yeast is a living organism so now the yeast cannot survive the yeast cannot flourish within this um, you know wine so the temperature is just too cold for the yeast and then it becomes dormant and as it becomes dormant it becomes inactive and then it stops being active, it stops, uh, it stops obviously, you know, fermenting. So it stops the fermentation process. And that's one way in which we can create or produce sweet wines. Whether or not that is categorized as, you know, low quality wines is really a topic for another day. But that's just a style that is used to produce or techniques that are used to produce sweet wines. So another way in which wine can re be, well, can be produced to retain the sugar or can be produced in a sweet style is the use of spirits. So there's the use of alcohol to stop the fermentation. So remember the idea is to stop the fermentation in order for you to stop the alcohol production meanwhile retaining the sugar concentration or the sugars in the wine. So the other way is the use of uh, spirits in you know adding spirits into the wine in order to uh, to stop the fermentation and that is 
what we often use when making fortified wines. So obviously the alcohol level would be much more higher and the yeast itself will not be able to uh, be active and then it will die, automatically die in that instance. It's instant. So the alcohol, the wine would have much more sweetness, residual sugars, and then high alcohol. So um, that is one way in which wines can be produced in a sweeter style. So obviously with fortified wines, you want to have like a you know premature kind of fermentation where the wine ferments for small, well a little bit of time and then you just add the alcohol in there because your purpose is not really producing alcohol since you are going to be adding alcohol. So um, some people enjoy fortified wines, some people just don't. I'm the kind of a person that doesn't enjoy fortified wines. But I do enjoy my sweet wines, so I do appreciate my sweet wines. And the other way is basically what we call, uh, you know, um, uh, botrytized wine. Uh, but to try sweet wines and these wines are really one of the wines that are so special and they come across as very expensive as well and they offer high premium quality sweet wines these wines um, obviously you can imagine there are a lot of processes that take place um, to produce that kind of wine starting from the harvesting um, they normally harvest it at a very later stage in order to you know let the grapes um, <clears throat> get infected by the botrytis um, scenario which actually causes the grape itself to um, to 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 in, well to increasing the, the, the sugar concentrate or the sweetness of the grape it dries it up and that is one of one way in which sweet wines can be produced so, um, yeah how sweet wines are made and this um, actually you know it takes a bit longer than your normal um, you know normal other styles that we've we discussed now um, so it's also ranked the, one of the most um, high quality uh, sweet mm. wines um, so you know um, they can also be kept a very long time sweet wines have that advantage to them that they can be kept for years and years and years um, and um, while we don't really enjoy sweet wine sometimes but these also come as wines that have high, highest quality and the other way is what we call uh, raisining the grape so that also helps to um, dry up the, the, the grape uh, by doing that the concentration of the sugars and the juice itself acids actually gets more concentrated um, so that's how sweet wines are made so basically the sweet wine is made by you know harvesting the grapes at really um, highest level of sweetness possible within the grape itself because that determines um, obviously well we need that sometimes and um, it, although it does determine the alcohol for potential but then the highest level of sweetness in your grapes to produce sweet wines would also come as an advantage and um, obviously the sweet the more sugar there is to ferment the the longer the fermentation process would take place but Sweet wines can be also matured just as white um, normal dry wines. They can be uh, matured in oak barrels just as much as uh, dry wines. So sweet wines come in various styles and not even forgetting that the, the, we can make sparkling wines as, you know, in a sweet wine style. So today I have with me the wines from the Siwela range. Um, you know, just to give you an idea um, of the different styles that get used to produce sweet wines and this the first one is the one that i'm having uh it's a really great uh rosé wine so obviously i've spoken about rosé wines before but this is in a semi-sweet style so the semi-sweet style is basically you know um defined by the amount of residual sugars that is in the wine and we do also have this one this is a natural sweet as well natural sweet also comes across as um, well, it's also determined in, uh, based on the amount of sugars are present. And the one is this one. I think this would be of a great, um, great topic to speak about. Um, this is the, um, this, well, I call it the rouge, but it's a semi-sweet um, sweet red. So the semi-sweet red is, I think, would make a great um, example or clarification on how sweet wines are made. But this one is actually just a, a blend of um, different wines made from different grapes and therefore um, it's also blended with um, a grape concentrate in order to sweeten the wine. So 
grape concentrate is purely just um, uh, juice that has no alcohol and it gets blended with the wine. Um, this one, however, is the method that it gets used is when we allow the wine to ferment until it reaches 12%. And then we just literally chill the wine, uh, dropping the temperature would kill the yeast uh, or make it dormant. And this right here. It's also made in the same style whereby the wine is allowed to ferment until it is 12% and then the, um, the wine gets chilled and therefore killing the yeast or making the yeast inactive. So um, I think that is just it about um, you know sweet wines, what I wanted to share with you today about sweet wines and how they get made and where they get the sugars from. So um, if I didn't discuss anything that was of interest, unfortunately, there's always next time. So um, I would like to, well, obviously, if you want to get hold of my wines, you can visit the website www.cwillawines.co.za. And you can also follow us on all social media platforms at Seawell Wines. We have amazing, um, you know, wines um, which you can explore. We do also have some amazing accessories that are great for gifting. It's almost Christmas time and everybody deserves a nice gift. And then we also have some fantastic um, everyday wine courses, online courses that are suitable for anybody who is really interested in um, whining like a pro. Um, doing that every day is what we should all be doing. And thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe. Cheers.